Hey guys, I am so sorry that this video took so long to come out. We've been staying at places that have been completely covered in trees, so Starlink service really wasn't a thing. I wanted to make sure that when I did this video, that I actually had some Starlink service. In this video, we're gonna do a couple things. One, I'm gonna show you how to make an ethernet cord. What that's going to allow you to do is really shorten up what could potentially be a really long ethernet cord and make it something nice and small and compact so you don't have a bunch of cords jumbled around. This will be good for both connecting your Starlink router to your Peplink router, but I'm also going to use this method of shortening up these ethernet cords to use with my solar system. The equipment that I use in my solar setup is all Victron equipment, and a lot of those individual pieces are connected via ethernet cable. If I'm able to shorten those ethernet cables up, it's just gonna sort of declutter that area in my bay. First, we're gonna make the ethernet cable, and then I'm gonna show you how to connect your Starlink router to your Pepwave router. So that being said, let's go ahead and jump right into making ethernet cables. I'm gonna use a couple different views and hopefully you guys will be able to see what I'm doing. Uh, we are gonna be working with some very small little cables, uh, so it might be a little tough to see, but if it comes out in editing that it's kinda of tough to see, I'll probably throw a graphic up so you guys can understand what I'm doing a little bit better. First off, I'm sorry if you guys see the tripod feet in the video. I'm trying to record this from a couple different angles so that it's easy for you all to see. All right, so first thing you're gonna need is RJ45 connectors. So these are the little plastic connectors that actually plug into your ethernet port. Next thing you're gonna need is some ethernet cable, some Cat5, Cat6 cable. You're going to need a crimp tool this will allow you to crimp the wires to the connectors. And really that's all you need. However, there are these little covers that uh, are, are sort of strain relief. Honestly, they, they, they slide down the cables. I don't really know how much they do. Uh, maybe if they're properly installed and I've just never properly installed them, they work better, but we're gonna go ahead and put them on our cable today. All right, so for this connection from our Starlink router to our Peplink, we really don't need a long cable. I'm gonna make one that's about 12 inches long. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut the cable using the tool. Uh, these tools all are a little bit different, but they have the same basic functions. Uh, you can put your RJ45 connector in there. You've got a stripper, you've got a cutter, just different different aspects to the tool. Some of them won't have all of those features, uh, but the most important one is this crimp portion where you can put your connector in and crimp down on it and it will make that connection solid. All right, so next step is we are going to strip the wire. I like to give myself a little more than I would think would be necessary um, because I want to make sure that I have enough length in these individual twisted pairs to make sure that I can make my connection. So you heard me say twisted pairs. That's what these are. These are actually two separate wires that are twisted together. There are four sets of them. So you've got a brown and white, a brown, a blue and white, a blue, a green and white, a green and an orange and white and orange, and they are wrapped around each other. The first thing you want to do is actually separate the twisted pairs. Just in this area, the reason that they're stranded together is to prevent as much interference as possible. So I'm gonna go ahead and I am going to unravel each of the, and please ignore my fat fingers. They kind of get in the way when 
doing something this fine, but we're gonna make it work. All right, so now that you have your wires all separated like this, this step is actually pretty important. You need to make sure that these wires are in the correct order when you plug them into your RJ45 connector. If you have another ethernet cable laying around, you might be able to cheat a little bit and look at the order of the wires that are in that connector. The best way I like to do this is you make sure your little plunger portion, the little part that you push down to pull a cable out, is facing away from you. Then the order goes orange and white, orange, green and white, blue, blue and white, green, brown and white, brown. That's all gonna make a little bit more sense when I show you on the stranded pair. You wanna start with orange and white, then orange. And you're gonna to have to play with these wires to kinda of get them to cooperate. You want these to be as even as possible across the top. That's how you're gonna get your best connection. So orange and white, orange, then green and white, blue, green and white, blue, blue and white, green, and then brown and white, and brown. So now that we have these in the correct order, we need them all to be nice and close to each other. There are, it's gonna be really tough to see, but there are little tracks inside of the connector that kinda help get them in place, but you need to get them about 90% of the way. So, I'm gonna play with these wires a little bit and we'll see if we can get them all even. So I don't know if you can see right there, we've got orange and white, orange, green and white, blue, blue and white, green, brown and white, brown. All right, so after playing with it for a long time, that's what she said. <laughs> I finally got them situated in there correctly. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert the connector into my tool and then crimp down on it nice and tight that should do is that should crimp these little gold connections down into the wire then what i'm going to do is a part that normally you would want to do first but since i have an open end on this end i'm going to slide my strain relief boot over top of my cable. And then, bingo, we have side one done. Now what you want to do is exactly the same to the other side. And then, voila. So I probably made that seem a little harder than it actually is. Um, honestly, with a little bit of practice, you can knock these things out super quick. It's been a long time since I did these for work, um, and there might be new tools out that help get the wires lined up right or whatnot. I'm not sure. Um, I know there are some new little RJ45 connectors that you can actually push the wires all the way through and then the crimper crimps it and cuts the wires, which those sound really awesome. However, I've never used them, uh, so I'm just kinda doing them the way that I, I've always done them. Um, and I think those, those uh, connectors as well as the tool are a little bit more expensive. Uh, old school way does work. 
So now what we're gonna do is we're going to take this cable, we're gonna connect it from our PEP wave to our Starlink ethernet adapter. And then that way we can run our Starlink service through that ethernet adapter into our PEP wave. So step one, make sure you stow your Starlink and turn it off. All right guys, so this one's gonna be pretty easy. Just plug into that last port right there on the PEP wave unit. And I'm gonna have to put down the light because I only have one hand. Hopefully you guys can see this since I don't have the light on because I only have one hand. And now I'm going to take the other half and plug it directly into my Starlink ethernet adapter. Now we should have a good connection. Let's go ahead in the settings and make sure we have everything set up properly. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we are gonna go into our Starlink settings and make sure that we are unstowed. Then we're gonna go to our PEP wave settings. And right now we have it set up as priority one being cellular, which is our cellular hotspot. Priority two being Wi-Fi as WAN. And then you see down here in the disabled section, we have WAN. What we want to do is we want to move this WAN up to priority one. What this is going to do is this is going to allow our Starlink router to send internet through that ethernet cable that we just made and it's gonna go into our PEP wave router and then to all of our devices as it normally would. We're gonna go ahead and speedtest.net this and see what kind of speeds we're getting. So it's looking like we have some connectivity, but it really isn't great if I'm being honest. And honestly, that's, that's kind of what we've found with Starlink in this area, is that there are just so many people in the Atlanta area using it, and the speeds have not been fantastic, if we've even been able to get Starlink service at all, just due to all the trees. Uh, so that being said, if you are planning on using Starlink, just know that the speeds in this area, in the Atlanta area, have not been great, uh, just from our experience right now. However, when we were out in Alabama, they were fantastic. Uh, when we were out in Missouri, they were very good as well. I think it's a congestion issue rather than a Starlink issue in this area. All right, guys, hope you liked that video. Hope it was informative. Uh, there's not a lot to it. It's a pretty simple process. Unfortunately, the Starlink connection here isn't great, so I'm probably gonna rely a little bit more on my cellular connection. However, when you're somewhere that Starlink isn't overly congested like the Atlanta area is, it's an awesome service and it saved my butt when we were out in Missouri and had literally no cell phone service whatsoever when we were out kind of in the middle of nowhere. Starlink was there and it worked just fine. So I hope you all have a good one. I'll see you next time.